Bob Grimes with the IFBTA here at NRF, and I'm here with Steve Carlin with SoftBank Robotics. Robotics. And uh, he's in charge of uh, marketing and business development. For North America, that's For right. For North America, so great. So a number of years we've uh, talked about robots at the CES show, but really what we've talked about are technologies where they're basically a, a pad, a tablet, that's running on something that can move with somebody remote, remotely controlling it and corresponding. And it seems that this takes us to the next generation. That's right. So I want to have a conversation with you about restaurants and hotels. Yeah. So what we have is a robot that can interact. That's right. Okay. And it's a one-on-one -on -one interaction. It doesn't need somebody behind the scenes. That's correct. It's a fully autonomous humanoid companion robot. And so it's very much designed to interact with people in an engaging way, bring them to Pepper, for example, that's the name of the robot, uh, to engage them and right. potentially deliver content. So we can imagine in a setting like a, a hotel lobby, uh, Pepper acting as a concierge, right. helping um, with recommendation engines on local restaurants or, or what have you, answering frequently asked questions that might be uh, right. available. Where can I go on the property? Where, how do right. I get to point A to point B? We've seen uh, a lot of our, our customers in the cruise line industry mm -hmm. wind up Pepper on board ships to help uh, not only navigate, Do but also tell you Pepper what activities. Do they have Pepper on ships now? They're talking about doing it. Uh, they've already purchased and will be loading them on soon. Okay, so that really takes things to the next That's level right. because people have always been talking about not losing that human interaction. That's right. So if they talk about remote ordering or remote reservations over a screen, they, they lose that. Now the technologies we've covered at CES, you have a person on the other end, but and they're taking orders basically and they're viewing things but they're not really right. interacting in person, right? So maybe if we think about the concierge in a lobby and giving people information, you can display on this tablet the same thing that you would display on a kiosk. That's right. right? So what about in the restaurant industry if we wanted to do line busting in a Starbucks, let's say, or table side, right? We could have Pepper come to the table side allow them to take the order, mm -hmm. because there's online ordering available already, That's right. and possibly put a payment device on there or comment card device, and it could suggest items and say, that's a good item, or let's pair this wine with it, or, That's right. I mean, really, it's fully interactive in that yeah. way. And what's great about it is because it's got a tablet, it's got multiple ways to input that information, so it's obviously got voice recognition, you've seen that right. a little bit here. It can visually recognize you, but it also has an input on the screen, mm -hmm. so it can augment that conversation by showing the, the Sunday, right right and enticing you maybe that's really what you want right um, up high right on pepper are we able to program it to recognize if it's a man or a woman Absolutely. or a child boy or girl Absolutely. and so have different uh, reactions yep. to that yep so if it was in a retail setting for example or even a uh, uh, a setting like uh, a restaurant like you're talking about it could it could take its content and deliver it separately to different demographic groups. Mm -hmm. So one one uh, message to the parents, and maybe a different message to the kids. Right, well they've talked about that for years with kiosks, being able to recognize who's in front of it and tailing, even digital signage. That's right. They've talked about the same thing, but what you're talking about is really doing it right the, at the place, but actually having Pepper acting as a person interacting. Yeah, and I think that's a key differentiator that we're talking about, is, is this will engage you in a way that a passive kiosk never could. So right. Pepper will call you out and bring you to it and then ask you questions. Right. What are you interested in? What, what can I help you with? Where do you want to go? Is the robotic technology coming out of Japan? Uh, actually, Aldebaran was the original company that designed the robots mm -hmm. based in Paris. In Paris. So I've covered some robotic technologies that come out of Japan where they actually look like humans. Mm -hmm. Is that? Do you want Pepper to look like this long term or do you envision it sort of looking yeah. like a person long term? Well, you know, Again, the use case for this was to engage and interact with people, right. and so you want that to be facilitated by, the, by its design. Mm -hmm. And so we very specifically made it, if you will, cute. Right. Because it's more engaging that way. We made it the height it is because kids can come up to it and not be thrown off. Right. We definitely do not want to enter into what's called the uncanny valley, which is when it gets to be too close to looking like a human, right. that it's actually off-putting. So we, the design was very specific. Right, so is this available for sale now? <clears throat> it's available for sale now in Japan, soon to be North America and Europe. What's the price point? So uh, if we were to translate the price point for a business to business unit right. from the Japanese market, we could foresee it being in a business for, call it five to $600 a month. And that's inclusive of a service. Uh, now, are you only planning it. to do it on a monthly model? No, but, but as, a, as an understanding of, of why it might make sense in that retailer. Why is that? Well, because for five or $600 a month, you get all the engagement, all the potential upsell that, that Pepper can deliver. So it's, it's really a pretty easy model if you think right. about it as a revenue generator. 
right? Right. Well, it's, it is. It's an extended revenue generator. Right. I could see a, a number of things. You could also have this if in a non-movable situation, you have it at the drive-through. That's right. You're doing things like That's that right. as well, right? Yeah, we've definitely talked about uh, versions that wouldn't have wheels and allow you to be stationary. <laughs> well, which would make a lot of sense as a greeter or something, but That's the right. wheels you know, makes a lot of sense. So how is Pepper actually getting around? Nobody's moving Pepper, right? That's right. right. So it, it has uh, directional wheels on the, on the bottom, and it's being told how to move based off where the sensors are, are, are um, picking up. Right, In but this if case, I want sound. Pepper working a station, Right. A set area. How do I define that quadrant of space that I want? I don't want Pepper to go all the way across yeah, the room. It, it's not. It's not programmed, at least in this setting, to go move around the room. It's programmed right. to spin in place. Right. So if you don't want it to do that, we don't program it to do that. But if I wanted it to move and recognize that there are tables, or recognize that there's a front door, right. are you able to do that? Well, that technology exists. That's not what we chose to put in this. Mm -hmm. um, simply because unscripted environments are very challenging for robots. Right. And so what, what we wanted to do to get it to a price point, <laughs> oh, you missed it. Oh, I missed it. All right. What we Wait. wanted to do to get it in, to be affordable in the marketplace was, was not load it down with a lot of really right. high tech million dollar type um, hardware. <laughs> Though, you probably saw at CES, right. uh, LiDAR, which is one of the main systems that a robot would use right. to move through its space, the costs are coming way down very soon. Right, well, so, so it'll more, change More to come time. on that. It's more on the concept. But you are already looking at hotels and restaurants. You Absolutely, said cruise yeah, ships, hospitality you know, is going to be a really important vertical Well, because test. they want to have that interaction right. with somebody, right. and they're afraid of losing it, and especially as they go to mobile That's applications. Right. You could have the mobile application, the person can go ahead and, and meet you. Right. It wants to, it wants a hug. A hug. So let's let's give it a hug. <laughs> Come here, Pepper. Aw, isn't that nice? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I, I think I think the opportunity to engage uh -huh. and create an environment and experience that your um, your viewers would be right. interested in is what Pepper's really good at. Right. Mobile is great. It's 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 got a lot of ease of use, but it's very impersonal as well. This tries to kind of marry the the both, right? Well, that's great. Well, look, we appreciate your talking to us yeah, about it. Pleasure. And there's clearly some applications here, and it's always good to see this outside of you know the industries we work in to That's see right. it somewhere else because then you can apply it and get it to go. So, That's right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Up oh, there, you go. Thank you. Cheers. Great. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you very much, Rob Grimes for the IFBTA here with Pepper at the NRF show.